for the contemplative meditation, I'm going to read a selection from the Ernest Holmes uh, Science of Mind. Then we'll have a minute of me silent meditation, and then Jackson will take us into the to the um, service. To have faith in God is to follow this faith through by having faith in the self. The real self is God and as such is to be implicitly trusted. The spark which burns at the center of our own soul is caught from the living and eternal flame of spirit. One people living on one planet, joining in one family, we are all one, one people living on one planet. Joining in one family, we are all one. And we do join here together, recognizing our oneness in spirit, knowing that we want to share our, our love for one another, our love for the planet in spirit, and knowing that each person brings a special feeling into the service and each person takes away a special message from the service. This is the way it works. And so each of us is destined to receive a special message today from the talk, from the music, from the fellowship. And I'm grateful for that fact. I know that we I know that we all are ready to begin the service with open hearts, open minds, open spirit. And so it is. One family living on one planet, joining in one family. We are all one. Thank you, Jackson and Claudia. So today's message is sparking imagination. I've enjoyed the uh, topics so far this month. The um, and I love this one. I I think I have an amazing uh, imagination. But you know, I was thinking about this idea of imagination, and I realized that imagination is a big part of our spiritual toolbox. It's also part of our spiritual mind treatments. And one of the things that I know is that as we go through uh, this teaching, as we continually reinforce these principles in our lives, one of the things that we have to do is prove these principles to ourselves. I got it in a conversation with somebody the other day that 
we can read the Science of Mind textbook and all the New Age books, there are new thought books that are out there. We can go to classes, we can talk to people and everything, but until we open ourselves up to allowing ourselves to believe in them, they aren't going to work for us, or they will work. Uh, like I was talking to this person the other day, uh, where I said, oh, page 52. And if uh, the page 52 in the old textbook is basically Ernest Holmes talks about it always works, principle always works, but sometimes it works by appearing not to work, especially when we're being negative. So we have to prove this teaching to ourselves in order to really experience it to the fullest. In our global vision, it says, we envision a world which has renewed its emphasis on beauty, nature, and love through the resurgence of creativity, art, and aesthetics. We envision a world that works for everyone and for all creation. And boy, right now, our world needs us to do this envisioning. Our world needs us to be open to looking at what we're imagining. Albert Einstein says, I don't really like this picture of him, but I like the quote. <laughs> Imagination is more important than knowledge for knowledge is limited to all we now know and understand, while imagination embraces the entire world and all there will ever be to know and understand. So we can follow the science or the math or whatever, but using our imaginations is even more important. So I have, of course, my three ideas. And everyone has a fertile and vivid imagination. You look at children, or you remember yourself as a child. And, and we played all the time using our imaginations. I can remember, uh, I just had a flash of a memory go through of my brother, who's 18 months older than I am, and I, when my family used to live in Alhambra, Southern California, we had taken dining room chairs out of the kitchen into the backyard or the garage or someplace and set them up one behind the other and we were playing train. And of course my brother was the conductor and I got to be the passenger. And uh, you know I pretended that there was a, a, a steward sort of like that came by and gave me a cup of tea and you know uh, my brother pretended that we were going around curves and you know uh, going faster or slower or whatever and I remember that for a few moments those chairs were actually a train and you probably have memories like that too where you you and others or you by yourself used your imagination and for a few moments were there, wherever it was. In The Science of Mind, Dr. Holmes says, creation is the play of life upon itself through divine self-imagination. Isn't that a beautiful statement? It's the play of life upon itself through divine self-imagination. So think about this. You know, some people have told me, well, I don't, I'm not very imaginative. I don't really have an imagination. Well, you do. You always do. And maybe we need to ask ourselves sometimes, am I imagining with fear or am I imagining with excitement? I can remember uh, another time in my life where the hills, I was living in Glendale, California, and the hills that, that separated, that were right and back of Glendale, I don't no north and south and all that but they were on fire and I was on the freeway going home and I could see the fire really clearly and I remember my hands being so tight on the steering wheel and I was thinking about my cats I lived 
on the other side of those hills in the lower hills but thinking about oh what if my cats are stuck in the house and the fire and am i going to go home and be able to go up my street and i mean i built this story a huge story i was imagining with fear and the funny thing about imagination is it doesn't care whether you're imagining through fear or you're imagining through excitement it just does what you imagine. Carl Sagan says, imagination will often carry us to worlds that never were, but without it, we can go nowhere. And think about what humanity has done. Uh, we've gone from crossing the United States in covered wagons to going to Mars, the moon, and who knows where else we'll be in a few years. And that's just a few hundred years. But somebody imagined it. And it became real. <gasps> Let me ask you this. How many of you have a smartwatch? I want one, but I don't have one yet. I mean, I, I keep telling myself, oh, you don't need that. But it's, you know, it's a new technical toy, right? But think about those smartwatches. And then ask yourself, who, wa who read Dick Tracy comics? Remember his watch? He had a smartwatch. Somebody, that cartoonist developed that idea. He planted the seed in the imagination and somebody brought it forth. So think about that when you're going through things, whether they're good or whether they're upsetting. Ask yourself, am I imagining with fear or am I imagining with love or with excitement? So the quality, I have to move you guys out of the way from it. The quality and character of one's imagination often corresponds to one's mental and emotional state, which goes right along with what I was just talking about. So let's look at this COVID experience. I was, uh, I like looking, I like reading, I read everything. I mean, when I was a kid, I would read the cereal boxes and everything I could possibly read, and I still do that. And I read this morning about a new variant that they've discovered. I can't remember where, but it's not in the United States, but it's one that totally bypasses the vaccines and I th and I started going into that fear place like what are we doing and I don't want to put anybody else in that fear place so let's just say that was in somebody's imagination as well the but so I went to my when I realized that I was going into that fear place I went to the affirmation that I shared with you last week that I've been using every single day, which is the pandemic is over. All are well. Now, if you look at this statement from the science of mind, it says that the creative power responds to feeling more quickly than any other mental attitude. So when I'm saying that, when I'm doing my mala and saying 108 times, the pandemic is over, all are well, what feeling do I have to have? I have to have excitement. That's what I realize is that I need to be doing this, not just saying this phrase by rote, like sometimes you know how affirmations get, you say them and you say them and pretty soon they don't have any power in them anymore because you don't, you're not putting it there. So my feeling, I realize I got to be excited about this. The pandemic is over. All are well. You know, I shared that uh, affirmation on the ministers list. And I was so surprised to see how many ministers wrote back and said they were going to share that with their congregation as well. And I thought, wow, cool. You know, so I could just see people all over the uh, science, the Centers for Spiritual Living saying that the pandemic is over. All are well. Now, I love this statement by Stephen Covey. Live out of your imagination, not your history. You know, we tend to 
think either in the past or in the future. We rarely think right where we are. Reverend Helen says used to say, be where your body is. That's how you practice being in the now. Be where your body is. So my body is not back there in the, in the past, and it's not up there in the future. It's right here in the present moment. So here I can live out of my imagination and have it even more powerful. Now I want to share with you something that I found on Facebook. I discovered a poet. Somebody shared something that this thing that I'm going to share with you. And I spent probably an hour and a half, two hours yesterday, on his website and his two different Facebook pages reading his poetry. A lot of it has come out of his being depressed, but it always turns out good in the end. So I want to share it with you. By the way, the poet's name is John Rodell. It's J-O-H-N-R-O-E-D-E-L dot com, and I will put that in Monday's newsletter. So listen, my brain and heart divorced a decade ago over who was to blame about how big of a mess I have become. Eventually, they couldn't be in the same room with each other. Now my head and heart share custody of me. I stay with my brain during the week and my heart gets me on the weekends. They never speak to one another. Instead, they give me the same note to pass to each other each week, and their notes they send to one another always say the same thing. This is all your fault. On Sundays, my heart complains about how my head has let me down in the past. And on Wednesday, my head lists all of the times my heart has screwed things up for me in the future. They blame each other for the state of my life. There's been a lot of yelling and crying. So, lately, I've been spending a lot of time with my gut, who serves as my unofficial therapist. Most nights, I sneak out of the window in my rib cage and slide down my spine and collapse on my gut's plush leather chair that's always open for me. And I just sit, 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 sit until the sun comes up. Last evening, my gut asked me if I was having a hard time being caught between my heart and my head. I nodded. I said I didn't know if I could live with either of them anymore. My heart is always sad about something that happened yesterday, while my head is always worried about something that may happen tomorrow. I lamented. My gut squeezed my hand. I just can't live with my mistakes of the past or my anxiety about the future, I sighed. My gut smiled and said, in that case, you should go stay with your lungs for a while. I was confused. The look on my face gave it away. If you're exhausted about your heart's obsession with the fixed past and your mind's focus on the uncertain future, your lungs are the perfect place for you. There is no yesterday in your lungs. There is no tomorrow there either. There is only now. There is only inhale. There is only exhale. There is only this moment. There is only breath. And in that breath, you can rest while your heart and head work their relationship out. This morning, while my brain was busy reading tea leaves and while my heart was staring at old photographs, I packed a little bag and walked to the door of my lungs. Before I could even knock, she opened the door with a smile and as a gust of air embraced me, she said, what took you so long? <sighs> that poem is amazing and it goes to these statements that I have here on this slide so let's look at the next one 
A calm and receptive consciousness sparks your imagination. Lori, you have your hand up. What's the matter? You have to unmute yourself. Well, I had a thumbs up and I was trying to erase it. And so I, <laughs> I hit the wrong button, I guess. So it looks like, so it might be there for a minute. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I love that poem, by the way. I made, it's too long to put in the Monday newsletter, but I, I will put the where it is in the Monday newsletter. And then you can read some of his other ones. They're amazing. Anyway, a calm and receptive consciousness sparks your imagination. So here you are sitting on the leather couch in the lungs with a calm and receptive consciousness that sparks your imagination. In the Science of Mind, Dr. Holmes says, imagination carries with it feeling and conviction, which means life and action. It carries with it feeling and conviction, which means life and action. And you know what? If you're busy with your heart thinking about the past and your head thinking about the future, you're not in the present moment. So you cannot even work your imagination the way you would like it to. Albert Einstein said, imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's coming attractions. So again, I'm going to say that my affirmation, the pandemic is over, all are well. That's a preview of life's coming attractions out of my imagination. So think for a moment, what is it in your life that you really want to see happening? You know, I did this, um, one of the workshops that I did yesterday at the, uh, the SOAR thing. Oh, darn, where did I put it? Oh, well, uh, Matthew McConaughey was, was, uh, I did this class on a workshop on spiritual cinema and the woman showed a clip of Matthew McConaughey getting an award, an Academy Award. And in his speech, he said that there were three things that were really important in his life. One was Oh shoot. Now I can't remember them. And they were so important to me yesterday, and the cat knocked all my papers off the desk. So, you know what? I can't remember what the, all three of them were, but one of them was that, oh, one of them was to always have something to chase. And what, then he went on to explain that the thing he was chasing was himself in 10 years. So when he was 15, he was chasing himself at 25. When he was 25, he was chasing himself uh, at 35, etc., etc. And I thought, wow, that is really neat. You know, I don't, I live so much in the present moment that I never think about, well, what would I like to have be doing 10 years from now or even five years from now? And so I sat down last night in my journal and I wrote a list of things I'd like to have done or be doing in 10 years from now. And 10 years from now, I'll be 83. So I would like to have traveled some more. You know, I'd like to see Australia and, uh, you know, very, the places I haven't been to yet. I'd like to uh, be in a relationship. I'd like to... Um, have our church be even larger and be making a major difference in the in our county and perhaps even further than that you know uh, it, and so there there i get to chase those dreams that was like what he was saying was chasing those dreams and it reminded me of jim carrey's story about wanting to make a million dollars so he wrote a check out he drew a check and he put it on the ceiling above his bed so that every morning he would wake up and he would see that million dollar check and he's making way more than that now. And where does all of that come from? 
Imagination is everything. It's a preview of life's coming attractions. Reverend Scott Aubrey says, Our imagination is an amazing creative tool. Everything is created twice. Now, Dr. Holmes said this in the textbook as well. Everything is created twice. First in the inner world of our imagination, then in the outer world of effects. First in the inner world, and then in the outer world. Nothing in the outer world will be here unless we haven't already had it in our imagination. Let the natural creative process flow as you roll up your sleeves and allow your inner genius to show itself. Each one of us is so powerful that we can create anything, absolutely anything. But first we have to have it in our imagination. And you know, I point it to my head, but I really see the imagination as filling both the heart and the head. So when we think about the three things that I talked about today and we think about this idea of imagination, I want to remind you of some things. Everybody, everyone is filled already with the power to duplicate the creative nature of spirit through our imagination. And you know, what is spirit's job? It's to create. So let universal mind localize as and through you all the time. It's going to anyway, so we might as well uh, have it go through us the way we would like it to. And for heaven's sake, pay attention to your intuition. To me, the intuition is the voice of the divine. And if we really could hear the voice of the divine, we would probably uh, explode. <laughs> you know, since, since the divine is absolutely everything, Fitting everything into us would be really difficult. But, so to me, this our intuition is this little device that's been created so that we can understand what the universe is saying to us. So really pay attention to it. I know that every single one of you has had an experience where something kept saying a certain thing to you in your head and you either didn't do it and experience the effects of it or you did do it and experience the effects of it. So let yourself really pay attention to your intuition and use your imagination for the highest good for all. When you find yourself imagining fearfully, let there be in fact, right now, make a, a, a declaration to yourself that part of your mind is going to be your silent witness. It's going to remind you when you're going down that road of negativity or the road of sorrows or whatever you want to call it. And it's going to remind you to use your imagination for the highest good for all. And my last one is be still and know. That's where you really get in touch with the div this divine energy, the creative nature of spirit or the universal mind or, or whatever you want to call this thing that we uh, use a short form, form word to identify it, this thing called God. Be still and know. Know that within you is not something separate from you, God and you. It's God as you. And so all the power that you've already assigned to this energy is within you. And you can open yourself up through your imagination, through uh, meditation, through spiritual mind treatment, through affirmations, to increase your parentheses in eternity as Joel Goldsmith used to say. So be still and know. So let's say this affirmation together and then we'll go into treatment. Uh, Catherine Kane, our Hawaiian practitioner, has written them this month. I open my mind to think wonderful thoughts beyond the practical. This expands not only my mind, but my level of joy as well. 
So gratefully, gratefully I acknowledge that there is that within us that is our real self, that capital R, capital S, real self. As Ernest Holmes says, there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. And that life is the life we are living right now. So I know for each one of us today that we're allowing ourselves to remember like children that we have an imagination that is unlimited. That we have an imagination that is powerful. And so we use it for the highest good for ourselves and for all else. Where we have been using our imagination in fear, we let it go. We just let it go. Knowing it's no longer of any value to us. And we use our imagination in love. Love for ourselves, love for our family and friends, our pets, our plants, our, our love for everything. Love for this planet. And I know that each one of us can imagine something really good. So for a moment of silence, let yourself do that. In your wildest imagination, Allow yourself to see the highest and best for yourself and for our planet. And breathe into that. And I know for us that we begin to pay more attention to our intuition, that voice of the divine. And this is a good thing, a very good thing. And so I celebrate us as we've met together this morning, knowing that each one of us has gotten something powerful to use for this next week of this adventure called life. We celebrate each other. We celebrate our center. We celebrate technology. We give thanks for absolutely everything. We know it is all good. It is all God. And so I release these words into divine law, knowing that they are already so, and so it is.